So over the last two videos, we've seen how to describe the state of a qubit. In this video, we'll see how to change the state of a qubit. In particular, we'll introduce our very first example of what's called a quantum logic gate. So what a quantum logic gate is, or what it does, uh, is it's a way of manipulating uh, quantum information or manipulating uh, the quantum state of a qubit or of a set of qubits. They're the basic building blocks of uh, quantum computation as well as doing other information processing tasks uh, such as uh, quantum teleportation. So the example I'm going to give in this video is a very simple single qubit gate, uh, the so-called uh, quantum uh, not gate. And as you can uh, no doubt guess, the quantum not gate is a generalization of the classical uh, not gate. And what it does, uh, at least on the computational basis states, is exactly the same as the classical not gate. So it takes the zero computational basis state to the one computational basis state, and vice versa. So it really is a, a very simple logic gate, uh, and simple way of manipulating information. Um, uh, the reason I'm explaining it here uh, is in part, well, it's important in its own right, but it's also that many of the ideas behind the not gate extend to many other more complex quantum logic gates and more complex uh, quantum computations. Okay, so that's the action of the quantum uh, not gate on the zero and one states, but of course those aren't the only states possible in a quantum computer or in a, a quantum bit, qubit. You can also have superposition states like this. What does the quantum not gate do to that? Well, uh, there are many possible actions which are consistent uh, with these uh, two uh, actions. Um, you can have all kinds of complicated uh, dynamics, but in fact the quantum knot gate does sort of the simplest possible thing. It acts linearly, meaning that it gets taken to the corresponding superposition of 1 and 0. So the 0 over here gets flipped to 1, and the 1 over here gets flipped to 0, and the superposition otherwise uh, gets preserved. So that's sort of a very algebraic way of writing down the action of the quantum knot gate. Um, when it's in an actual uh, quantum circuit, or there's an alternate representation, the quantum circuit representation, which for a knot gate I'll depict here. So what is this quantum circuit? Um, well, this line is what's called a quantum wire. And basically it represents a single qubit. So we sort of imagine over here, this is the qubit initially in this state, or whatever it is. It goes along, nothing happens, nothing happens through the quantum wire. Well, then a quantum logic gate is applied. Uh, the quantum not gate is actually denoted by an X for historical reasons that we don't need to get into right now. Uh, so you know, that manipulation is done on the state of the qubit. And then the quantum wire just continues uh, and leaves uh, the desired uh, output. Okay, so that's the matrix representation, uh, sorry, that's the, excuse me, the quantum circuit uh, representation of the quantum knot gain. There's another uh, representation, a uh, matrix uh, representation um, of the action of the uh, quantum knot gate. So let me describe that representation. It's basic, the action of the knot gate can actually be represented in terms of this matrix. Two by two matrix. And to see why that's the case, well, you know, we, we want the knot gate, the X, on zero to produce the one state. Well, what happens if we look at the, you know, this matrix acting on the vector corresponding to the zero state, which is just the one zero as we've seen, it produces zero one, just the first column actually, because it's the, the you know, we've got a one up here. And that is indeed the one state. And furthermore, if you use this matrix again, here acting on the one state, well, you can go through same basic deal, 0, 1, 1, 0, acting on, you know, it's the 0, 1 vector. That gives you 
one zero, the second column here, which is the zero state. And matrices act linearly on vectors, uh, so indeed we know since it gives the right action on the zero and the one state, that it must give uh, the right, this matrix must give the right action on an arbitrary quantum state. So this is a, a you know, correct matrix uh, representation. Okay, so that's a very simple example of a quantum logic gate, and indeed it's a simple example of a, of a quantum circuit, this, this guy, and a uh, quantum computation. Uh, there's actually an even simpler quantum circuit, the simplest quantum circuit of all, and uh, that's this, just a single quantum wire. This is sort of the sim simplest possible quantum circuit, or the simplest possible quantum computation. And it's tempting to regard this, so, so what does this do? It, it of course, you know, it's just a single qubit being preserved in time. So whatever the input is over here, let's call it the state psi, which might be you know, alpha zero plus beta one, is also the same as the output over here on the right. And it's tempting to regard this as completely trivial, uh, but in fact, a quantum wire is in many systems uh, the, the hardest thing of all uh, to implement. Quantum states tend to be very fragile, partially because they're usually implemented in very, very small systems, single atoms, single photons. Um, and because of uh, that uh, you know, extreme sort of smallness, they are very fragile and, uh, and they tend to sort of get perturbed very easily by their environment. So this quantum wire is in many cases actually the hardest element of all to do in a computation. Okay, so that's uh, quantum wires. Uh, let's get just a little bit of practice in thinking about the quantum knot gate. Uh, let's ask ourselves a question. Let's analyze a simple quantum circuit. This is one with two knot gates in a row. And you can probably guess what it does, but let's just work through the mathematics. So if the input state here at the left is alpha 0 plus beta 1, it gets changed by the first knot gate to alpha 1 plus beta 0, and that gets changed by the second knot gate into alpha 0 plus beta 1. So we flip the 0 to the 1, and the 1 to the 0, and then we do the same thing again, uh, the second knot gate. And of course, uh, you know, what that means is that nothing at all has happened, and you know, that the input qubit over here is the same as the output qubit. So in fact, this is equivalent to just doing a quantum wire. Uh, you know, there's, you know, this, this quantum circuit is, is effectively equivalent to a simple quantum wire. There's another way of seeing this, or proving it. Um, you know, imagine that the input over here, uh, let's call it psi, uh, well, what, what happens to psi? It gets taken, first of all, uh, to x psi by the first gate, and then this gets taken to x times x psi, which is by the second gate, and uh, so if we want to understand the effect of the circuit, then we can just compute what happens when we use the matrix x uh, twice when we multiply it by itself. So 0, 1, 1, 0, times 0, 1, 1, 0, and that's equal to, let's go through, let's look at the top left-hand corner, so it's 0 times 0, plus 1 times 1, equals 1. The top right-hand corner, we get 0 times 1, plus 1 times 0, equals 0. Bottom left corner, 1 times 0, plus 0 times 1, equals 0. Bottom right corner is 1 times 1, plus 0 times 0, equals 1. So that's the identity uh, matrix, the 2 by 2 identity matrix, and as a result, whatever the input is gets taken to the identity times the input, which is just the same as the original input. So this is sort of a more algebraic way of seeing that the effect of two not gates in a row is just the identity. Okay, so that's a simple introduction to the quantum not gate. Of course the quantum not uh, is, as we've seen, a very uh, you know, simple, almost classical uh, gate. In the next video, we're going to see our first example of a really truly quantum gate, uh, something that you know does involve superpositions in a, a very non-trivial way in the output, uh, and that's the so-called Hadamard gate.